Hello everybody, welcome back. Today I want to show you a little bit of an animation work that I've been doing. We are here already in VR, so I just want to show you how this is all set up. Here we have a potential enemy that's wielding an axe, looking very menacing. Now if I try to hit him, he reacts to the hit. And depending on where the sword hits, he has a little bit of a different reaction. So let's see how that's set up. All right, so first, let's see here our enemy. We have a rigid body, an animator, a bunch of colliders set up in the body, and an enemy behavior script. Let's start by looking at the animator. The animator is pretty straightforward. We start with an idle state. It has a number of other states that we're not going to go through today. It has a, an attack, downward and horizontal, a running state, then has a hit reaction that we saw here when the enemy gets hit, and then we have a death state for when the enemy dies. We'll be looking at the other states in future videos, but I wanted to show you first the hit reaction. The hit reaction can actually get triggered from any state, but for now we're only going to be looking at how it triggers from the idle state. And this is with this transition. It has a condition here that says if the trigger got hit is triggered, then we move into the hit reaction state. And from the hit reaction state, we always transition back to the idle state. So this is a way in the future that we will use to interrupt the attacks that the enemy will do. So if we are able to hit the enemy while it's stacking, it will interrupt it with the hit reaction and then it will go back to idle, therefore canceling their attack. And as you can see here, we already have a bunch of parameters defined. For now, we're only going to be looking at the got hit and the hit source right, which are the ones that we're using for the reaction. If we look inside the hit reaction, it's actually a blend tree. So let's look into that. This has two different animations. We can see here the heat reaction from left and the heat reaction from right. And you can see here in the blend tree, depending on how the heat source right parameter is set up, we blend between the two different animations. This gives a lot of variety to the heat animation because it's not only one or the other animation, it's actually blending between the two. So it gives a little bit of a different feeling to it depending on how the heat is happening. And as you saw, we're using the heat source right here to determine how to blend between the two animations. All right, so let's look at the code to see how that's set up. In the enemy behavior script, we have set up here the reference to the animator, and we have two static references to the got hit parameter and to the heat source right parameter. So here in the start method, we're just getting the reference to the animator. Then on the trigger enter, this is something that we didn't look into, but actually all the colliders here for the enemy are set up as triggers. This is because the way that the axe behaves or any of the other damagers in the project behave, they are using triggers and kinematic behaviors. And if you're using regular colliders, the kinematic objects will not trigger the on hit enter or on hit exit events. They will only trigger the on trigger enter and on trigger exit events. So that's why they are set up as triggers. So here on the on trigger enter event, we try to find if the collider that entered the trigger has the damager component. This is the sig signature component for all the damagers like the axe and the sword. And then if it's not a damager, then we simply skip. We do nothing. But if it's a damager, we set the hit source right float using this from right method. This is what sets the parameter to use the left or right animation and which blend to use. And then we set the trigger got hit to actually trigger entering the, uh, the hit react state. Here I have commented out the line here. If we were able to use on collision enter, you actually can use the get contact method here from the collision. And that will give you the exact point where the collision happened. But triggers don't really have that method. They use the closest point method that will tell you which point in the other collider is closest to the trigger collider boundaries. So let's look at what the from right method is doing here. The from right method is getting the right vector of the current transform. That's the vector that's pointing right from the enemy body. And then doing a dot product between the collider point that we found here in the closest point 
and the right vector. The dot product is going to tell us the orientation. So if the vectors are aligned, if the heat is coming straight from the right, the dot product is going to be 1. If it's coming completely from the left, the dot product is going to be minus 1. And anywhere in between is going to go between minus 1 and 1. If it's completely perpendicular, like coming from the front, it's going to be 0. And because the parameter that we have set is a 0 to 1 parameter for the blend tree, we want to map the value there. So the minus 1 to 1 spectrum, we want to map it that to a 0 to 1 range. And to do that, we're simply dividing the dot product by 2 and then adding 0 0.5. So if it's min minus 1, it's going to be minus 0 0.5 and then with the plus 0.5, it's going to go to 0. Maybe it's all the way to 1, and the dot product is going to be 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 equal to 1. So that's the range that it's going to be moving in. And here we're just logging the dot product so we can check that it's actually working. And you can see here from the log that it ranges from 0 0.3 all the way to 0 0.7, 0 0.8 at times, depending on where it gets hit. And that is basically it. I just quickly jump into VR again so we can see how it's working again now that you know how it's built. All right, so here you can see if I hit from the right, is one animation. From the left, different animation. From the front, it's a blend. He gets a different animation every time. And that is it. This is a, a very simple process here for now. It's going to get more complicated as we continue to add more states and we continue to finish the whole animator here. We'll still need to do a few more things to get the enemy attacking and also moving around with the run state and we also have to do the death part all that's gonna be pretty fun so we'll be looking at that in a future video but that will be it for today i hope to see you in the next video thank you for sticking around with me and i will see you in the next one bye for now